piece of jewelry from Fabergé. And I thought, this doesn't need to be filmed in a certain sense, because this is already art with its gold, its silver, its design, and its function. And I think a lot of what NASA does, and I've been trying to figure out how to isolate the real designers, because they're majestic, and wonderful designers. Because to my eye, this is all art. And one of the reasons I'm coming back to try and make a second film on the next mission to Mars, the Space Lab mission, is because I think there's a huge audience out there in America and the world now for a longer film on how the scientists and engineers who totally fascinate me. And when I entered into the idea of making a film about the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in NASA, I really believed the common idea that engineers and scientists are not that interesting. I think I proved in the film Roving Mars that the scientists and engineers are not just interesting, they're fascinating people. <clears throat> and I plan to make a two hour film in 35 millimeter for theatrical distribution. We're meeting with Disney in September about financing the film. Frank Marshall, a very gifted producer who's produced all of Steven Spielberg's films, is backing the project. He backed Roving Mars, which Disney actually in one week in 2003, 2003 saw the film entirely and he talked them out of doing it. And that's the kind of support that I need as a director. But I hope it all works. And I hope that I can bring a new film back, which you all will enjoy. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Jim Dean, <clears throat> and uh, years ago I was uh, working with NASA and began the uh, uh, space art program. I still don't know how to operate one of these things. <clears throat> but what I wanted to say, I, I agree with George completely, that uh, these spacecraft that go to other, other worlds are like crown jewels. And I can remember taking many artists through uh, some of the white rooms down to Cape Canaveral and have them just fascinated by the way these uh, uh, machines were being put together with their gold and silver and the beautiful uh, piping and things that were on them wrapped in plastic and tagged with colorful tags as they're being checked out and then prepared to go to the launch pad and be stacked on top of the, uh, the launch vehicle that would take them into another world. I remember one time being down there with uh, a group of space artists, Ron Miller being one who was with us, and he had a group of friends along too. And uh, we had an opportunity, this was back in I guess around 1980 or so, and we were able to get into the room to see the Viking being prepared for its launch. And we had to go, we had to put on these gowns, cover our feet and our head, and if you had a mustache you had to wear a bib around that. And you couldn't take any art materials into the room uh, except for a plain white pad of paper and maybe a magic marker, but nothing that would crumble or make dust or anything like that. Then we had to pass through a chamber of purple lights. They were telling us that this would sterilize all the bacteria on our body before we went into the white room. We got into the white room and there was Viking being prepared and uh, we were fascinated by that. But I had an artist along with us too, a painter named uh, Fletcher Martin. He's a very fine uh, uh, painter. He worked a number of years in Mexico with Saqueros doing uh, murals. And he'd spent a lot of years working as a longshoreman on the West Coast. He'd been a prize fighter, and he'd been through World War II as an artist. So he had his nose broken several times, and he had great bushy eyebrows and a huge Mexican mustache. And the space artists were fascinated by him. <laughs> they said he looked like Ming who was out of Flash Gordon or Buck Rogers or one of these. 
So at least spent a lot of time admiring him, sketching him, and then paying attention to Viking. But this is one of the uh, side pleasures that, that I had in working with a lot of very interesting people. But to take you back to see how we got started on all of this, go back to 1960 when we were having the Mercury astronauts, John Glenn doing three orbits around the Earth and coming back in, and then other Mercury astronauts following him. And uh, there was a lot of attention being paid. The uh, Life magazine was doing a story on each one of them in a continuous uh, stream over years. And uh, there was a, an, an enormous amount of public interest. And one day I received a memo, this was in like 1962, uh, from James Webb, who was the administrator of NASA. And he said, you know, we're doing a lot of historical things that are really important, and I think what we, and we have a mandate in the Space Act of 1958 to communicate with the public on every level about what's going on in the space program. And he said, why not see if fine artists might be able to help us communicate this to the public? So that was all I needed to begin uh, talking around. But knowing that NASA, being an R&D agency, you know, we, even though I was trained as an artist, I, we really didn't have credentials to go out and start selecting artists. So we thought what we had to do was get some kind of uh, backing, some kind of support. So we went to the, uh, the U.S. Fine Arts Commission, talked with them, explained what we had in mind. They blessed the program and said, you know, if you want a little more authority, go to the National Gallery and talk with the people there. So we went and we talked with John Walker, who was the director of the National Gallery at that time, and he was enthused about the idea, too. It was hard to imagine anybody not being enthused about anything that had to do with space back in those days. But uh, he said, talk with a, one of our curators, a man named Lester Cook, and see if he'd be interested in working with you. So I talked with him, and he had been in the Air Force during World War II, and uh, was uh, enthused about the space program from what he had read, and he was willing to uh, lend us his expertise. So he worked with us for the next uh, 10 years or so. But uh, what we would do, what we would do, well, in addition to talking with museum types, we also talked with artists to see what their reaction would be to getting involved like this. And you know, if you think back, space exploration began in the imagination of artists, and I think artists were really ready to get back into it. Photography had kind of pushed them aside for many years, but here was an opportunity now to get involved with something that was exciting, something that was going on. And NASA had the unique advantage of being able to predict with a very small margin of error just when history would be made and invite artists to come in and be eyewitnesses to this. So th there wasn't much of a problem in talking artists into getting involved in this. And uh, we made a few calls, got several artists lined up, and got everything kind of ironed out just in time to catch the last Mercury flight, Gordon Cooper's flight. So we had that covered, and a lot of the work that came as a result of that uh, ended up making the, uh, the basis of our first show at the National Gallery. I had seven artists at the Cape for about five days before Cooper was launched, and I had one artist in the middle of the Pacific Ocean waiting for the splashdown and the recovery, who incidentally was uh, Mitchell Jameson and an art professor here at the University of Maryland. So uh, that work came in and it was being uh, prepared and shown at the National Gallery in 1965. We went on then after to cover the Gemini program and the Apollo program, and then did another show in November of 1969 at the National Gallery that uh, because of the moon landing a few months before, there was a high public interest in whatever came out of the program. So uh, the National Gallery had the, the highest audience attendance for a show that they'd ever had, except for the time when they showed the Mona Lisa. So uh, I know they've had a lot of blockbusters since then, but at that particular moment, uh, the, uh, the NASA space art uh, show uh, really just about captured the prize, except for that famous uh, Da Vinci painting. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a few examples of some of the things we collected in the early, early part of, uh, of the, the art program's days, and then I'll turn it over to Bert Ulrich to carry on uh, what he's doing now. But let me see if I can get this to do something. Okay. The, uh, First thing I want to show you is a, a drawing that Paul Kelly uh, did 
uh, did of Gordon Cooper's launch on an, on an Atlas uh, launch vehicle 